Hello and welcome to DCB SideQuest, episode number 93? I didn't look, actually. Crap. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, that's what's on Rich's title, so unless that was last week's title, then... Uh, it, it could be. 93. It's 93. It's 90, it is 93. I looked at my list of exports. It's officially episode number 93. Uh, 93. Briar is currently out uh, doing donuts in the parking lot at a... Um, Let's say Walmart. I'm pretty sure it's a Walmart with his it new Mustang. It has to be a Walmart. Yeah. Walmart thought, would be the I... place that wouldn't wouldn't tell you to go away while you're doing donuts. Exactly. <laughs> They're like it's an attraction. Right. He's got a new Mustang. He's got to burn the he's got to burn the rubber. Right. And where else to burn oh, the rubber in the Walmart gonna, parking lot? He's got to drive to the car park so he can fill the boot with the uh, long arm convenience device. <laughs> he's buying the whole stock. Remember? That's, yeah, that's <laughs> he's what he's doing. <laughs> so then he can go to the next car park and he can like he can do donuts <laughs> while the boot is open. He can just throw them everywhere. Like Oprah, everyone gets them. Yeah, you ass. get a long arm. You get a long arm. <laughs> Trouble wiping the ass. Feel, you get a long arm. I feel like we need to reach out to that company and be like, "Do you want to sponsor SideQuest? Because we've we've given you a lot of a lot of um coverage free for three episodes now. Mm -hmm. Three episodes now. True. They're getting this free. I mean, we need to stop talking about it because they're getting That's too true. much free. They might just say, well, you've already done it, so why already. do we need to pay you now? <laughs> but <laughs> if they want a fourth episode, they if they want to, a review, yeah. if they want an extensive in-depth review, they're going to have to I think what we should do, we should agree that Briar needs to be the spokesperson for the long arm, and we should submit him yeah. forward as the spokesperson for the, I agree. the long arm device. Yeah, Definitely. They can even get a mascot device where they make a massive one. You know, like you know, like when and you can you can wear it as a suit where like your face pokes out the front of it. <laughs> a mascot and we can long arm. Toilet, <laughs> we can attach toilet paper to Briar. That'd be oh, great. look at that! <laughs> I mean, he's not here, so he can't say no. So we'll we'll all agree yeah. on it. And then when he comes the back, the deal's he's done. Got to do it. What an amazing journey! He went to Walmart to get to buy out all the long arms, not just one, all of them. Turned out there was a, a donut spinning uh, competition in the middle of the parking lot. He joined that. Suddenly did that and now became the official spokesperson of the long arm and possibly a mascot as well. Mm. There we go. Look at that. What a ton of events. That's a lot to unpack in one episode. That's, right? that's, that's a Monday. That's, 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 that's a regular Monday for us. <laughs> oh, man. Well, there was um, some spooky stuff that happened over the weekend. There was. Spooky yeah. Town. Spooky Town, USA? <laughs> that's what it should have been called and then they should have done a, a remix of party in the usa but it's spooky town oh, in yeah. the usa it's a spooky town in the usa yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that would have been amazing yeah, yeah i feel that yeah that'd be great uh, uh resident evil village yes eight. Resident so for eight, reference village. uh eric's yes. played all the way through it right did everything yeah i i, I platinumed it yeah you know i'm, I'm already platinum. Just, uh, easy mode yeah you know <laughs> uh i have not partook in resident evil yet i'm excited to stream it i was not able to do it over the weekend i know watts you played how far in you or how far are i you i'm about 80 percent. so 80%, i think today okay. when i stream we will probably finish it so are we going to agree no spoilers for this particular no discussion spoilers. right yeah we, we won't give any spoilers especially like you haven't played it so if i'm like yeah was, so wow what'd you think about that part i oh, was worried i was gonna have to hit the stop stream button and like leave the call <laughs> Just done. <laughs> uh, but we could definitely do first impressions of like the world, the graphics, uh, the vibe. What kind of Resident Evil are we playing? Yeah. What, what system are you playing it on? I'm playing on PS5. Nice. Mm. Um, and it has been gorgeous. It's got ray tracing awesome. on it. Awesome. Um, I think it's I think it's 45 FPS if you're doing 4K with ray tracing. But okay. if you're doing 1080 with ray tracing, it's 60. Nice. So lots of things. That's great. Yeah. I only noticed a dip in one area, but it's water. And anytime there's a lot of water in areas, the game seems Those reflections, to right? Suffer. So many yeah. reflections. Um, but it runs really well. It's it's a very, very beautiful game. There's not many times that I've played a Resident Evil game where I'm walking around and I'm like, oh, let's take in the, right? the beauty of this game. Yeah. yeah the normally you're not trying to run away from dangerous Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Normally I'm screaming and running in a circle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Look at this beautiful I'm... brick in the basement. How it's placed so wonderfully in the wall in this <laughs> dungeon. The reflection on the brick. <laughs> yeah. Well, Look at the reflection. Get a reflection on the brick. But you know, <laughs> there are reflections. It. If it's a wet, they're wet. Yeah, wet bricks oh. got reflections. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's okay. in the dungeon. There's actually a lot of reflections because of the dim lighting and ev everything is moist. If I could describe Resident Evil, I would say it's moist and it's gooey. 
Yeah, there's a, I think do? the actual term is dank, a dank <laughs> seller. I think like that's the <laughs> really le- dank. That's the legitimate term of dank. Yeah, is a dank seller is like most. I'd say in- Capcom was definitely on the danks while they were making Resident <laughs> Evil Eight. That is sure. <laughs> so there's a there's a leak in the basement and they got a fungus problem. Got it. Okay. That's, Definitely. That's because Resident Evil. Hey, Resident Evil Seven. They called it the mold, right? Yeah. The mold. Oh, it is the mold. The, the fungus mold. infection. So does that mean the whole the whole story is just like someone at Capcom has had like a a, a, a problem at home, right? They're like, I've got I've got mold this time. <laughs> I've got a leak in my house. Let's build a whole Resident Evil around this. So what will yeah. it be next time? It's like, oh, the the air conditioning's broken. Oh, uh, <laughs> like, a sweltering oh, heat that's causing one. demons to burst out yeah. of people from the heat. <laughs> Resident Evil Nine. Pipes. Honestly, in Resident <laughs> Evil world, you can just make up whatever the hell you want. And who cares? Yeah. Everyone's just going to be like, that's goofy as hell, and I like it. Resident Evil's always been, like, a goofy horror. It's been mm-hmm. scary, definitely. And it's been jump scares that have really got mm. you. But it's never taken itself too seriously. Even yeah. when you're seeing crazy stuff happen to Ethan in Resident Evil 7, you're like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> like, this is, this is insanity. <laughs> yeah. So, question on story: Is yeah. it a continuation yeah. from Seven? In is it connected? Heavily? It is okay. Is that it's too a direct s- continuation? Is it too spoilery to say if, how what kind of connection it is? Um, I don't think so. It's you're playing as Ethan again, who was the guy from Resident Evil Seven. Um, and the the premise of the the beginning of the story is that you know Mia is okay. If you played Resident Evil Seven, Mia's totally fine. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> fine. She's Fine. a bit of a crazy, <laughs> but she's got the mold has infected her brain. She's a bit moldy. Got it. Uh, so they've <laughs> moved away and they're now living in Europe and they have a child and, you know, they're living their happy life in, in Europe, drinking wine. That's normal. They normal happen. Wine. Did they move to Transylvania? <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. Bad call. Bad, bad idea to move there. Bad Out of idea. all the places you could have found, Ethan, I don't know how you managed to find the place of vampires. Got, yeah, you got done fighting demonic fungal beasts, and then you're like, <laughs> let's go to Transylvania. That'll be nice. Surely you pick like a nice holiday destination instead, just somewhere like, yeah. surely there can't be any demons on this tiny little island yeah. on a farm or something. <laughs> they could have gone to like the south of France or something, gone on the beach. Bummer. Exactly. Well, maybe that's what they were going for with all the wine. You know, they or have the English countryside. Nothing true. happens there. No, true. Yeah, just a lot yeah. of stones piled up as, mm-hmm. you know, what it... A- alien yeah. alien uh, communication devices. Alien <laughs> communication <laughs> stones <laughs> piled on the hillside of, uh, the, yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, so Resident Evil 8 is... So there was actually an interview with the someone who works on Resident Evil, and he was saying that Resident Evil 7, a lot of people found too scary. Too like scary. It was, you know, they're, they're like force feeding you maggots and you're freaking throwing up till you die. And there's just like, <laughs> there's a lot of it's very gory Resident Evil 7. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's super spooky. I would say it's more gory. There's a lot it's of gore. the Nemesis one where the dude's just chasing you and jumping after you. Yeah. That is Resident Evil 3. Yeah. Oh, hmm. OK. OK. Yeah. You know, Resident Evil 7 was pretty horrifying when I think about it. It it was, yeah. And and I think a lot of people, their feedback at least, was that they just, they couldn't play it because it was too they much. They couldn't play it, really? Couldn't play it too much. Man. So going into Resident Evil 8, they wanted to make it less scary while still, of course, you know, it is a scary franchise, so it can't just yeah. go be sunshine and rainbows. But they didn't, they wanted to rein in the, the spooky a little bit. Hmm. Have you noticed it? Is it considerably less spooky? Yeah, it's definitely focused on the action. The same way that Resident uh, Evil 4 was when it came out. Like Resident Evil 1 through 3 were pretty... Like 3 had some more action, but 1 through 3 was like slow, scary, what's around the corner. Like it was very scary. Yeah. Um, and then Resident Evil 4 was like, here's a line of zombies that you just blow their heads off like, right. six at a time. You're not afraid of them anymore. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they gave you so much power and there was a mm-hmm. merchant where you could buy ammo and guns. So you were definitely less limited on the the arsenal that yeah. you had. Um, and Resident Evil 8 is much more akin to that. There is, again, a merchant. There's an upgrade 
path to upgrade your guns to make them more powerful or buy better guns. You can buy mines and stuff and pipe bombs. Uh-huh. Can you farm currency or is it finite? Um, you can. If you look around, there's like little glimmers in places. It's shiny. If you shoot that, it'll normally drop a crystal. And then okay. you can sell that for money. And then a lot of the things that you kill will drop crystals that you can sell. Hmm. Do they respawn or is it one and done? I think it's one and done okay. for the most part. Yeah. So there, there is a limited amount of what you can get. Um, yeah. But you get plenty of money to kind of get everything that you want. How do you feel about upgrades being sold as opposed to being found in previous Resident Evils? Um. Yeah, it's it is different. I it does kind of feel like in Resident Evil 8 there is less to discover. There's still stuff there, mm-hmm. but you know the the formula of Resident Evil of puzzles and finding mm-hmm. things and putting it together and now you make this new thing so now you can go yeah, into this other take area. The glass That's eye kind out of something and put it in the thing, yeah. Yeah, and they do have that. And I think the the castle is actually probably the the best show of the kind of more original Resident Evil formula of puzzles spooky being hunted and shooting some stuff okay like it's they've they have that formula more in the castle but in other areas there's a lot more action in other areas there's like no action so they do have a pretty good mixture in there and Hmm. each of the different areas kind of play like you're going through a theme park of horror almost and you're experiencing these different flavors of Halloween horror, horror nights at mm-hmm. Universal Studios. It, kinda, yeah. Kinda. It's like going into individual different uh spooky houses. Yeah. And it has its own theme, which is kind of cool. I think it, it means that it probably has at least one segment for everyone. Um, okay, cool. How are you liking the yeah. antagonist? Uh pff, I can't talk about that. Can't talk. Okay. Did spoiler talk even much. talking it's about too, that? It's too spoiler to even talk about it. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I saw all weekend. Is I, I I haven't even seen the 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 Resident Evil stuff. I just see people just getting happy about the big lady. That's it. <laughs> yeah, there's now a mod that you can turn your knife into like a fly swatter. So people, I saw a clip of someone going up behind her and slapping her ass. And <laughs> right away. Oh my gosh! So that is what people are doing in Resident Evil. They are slapping oh, asses. And ass slapping. <laughs> ass slapping. Man. Yeah, that doesn't sound as scary as Resident Evil 7. <laughs> it's it's not as... There's one section that I think is... Uh, it's more in line with like a PT kind of feel. Okay. Which I Ooh. think was cool. Um, but for the most part, I would say that it is not as scary as Resident Evil 7. Hmm. Or even Resident Evil 1 through 3. Do you think they nailed the target of trying to make it more accessible then for people? I think... Yeah, honestly, I think even if you just put a super hot lady that's apparently going to kill you, it's less scary to get caught by a hot chick over a gross, gooey monster (laughs) that Mm. eats you. (laughs) Yeah. Mama Bug scared the crap out of me. You see that (laughs) diaper of bug diaper that she was wearing? Oh, my God. Yeah, I see. That's the thing. It's like even even getting caught. It's the same thing, right? Whether Lady D catches you or some other gross thing catches you. But the animation of the gross thing catching you, you don't want to see it. It's disgusting. Mm, You look at it and you're like, I don't want that. Especially in VR. Can't imagine. (laughs) Exactly. Mm. Yeah, which Briar did play in VR, all of Resident Evil 7. He is a madman. Yeah. That would be terrifying. I would never. Yeah. Was there VR support for RE8? No. There's currently not any. I don't know if it's something that they'll add later. Maybe it was part of their, uh, this is too spooky. Too spooky, yeah. Put it over the, the line. And so it's obviously first person again. And do you... It is. Yeah. Do, do you like the first person experience? In our- so I was talking with Chad about this. And you know uh, the medium, how the medium used yeah. a fixed camera, but it was like an updated fixed camera. Mm-hmm. I would actually love Capcom to explore that because I think they could probably do it the best out of anybody in the world because yeah. their original Resident Evil series was so good with the fixed camera. And the good thing about a fixed camera is that there's no way to kind of cheese the camera and see what's around the corner. Like True. you have to see what the game wants to show you. Yeah. And that is that. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it would I think it would be really interesting to see them go down that road of an updated modern fixed camera and do a Resident Evil with that. I don't know if people would be down for it, but I think it would be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, first person. So interestingly, um, I Lulu, who is a Destiny streamer who streamed a bunch of other mm-hmm. games, she's playing Resident Evil 8. 
And she said that this is the only game that's given her like crazy motion sickness. Interesting. And it's because the FOV is teeny weeny uh, tiny. Yeah, for the horror aspect. Yes, it yeah. is. And I think they could do with giving an option to pull it back a bit. Obviously, with with the scary game, you have to keep it confined within a certain um, yep. parameter. But it it does feel like claustrophobic, which I get is probably the point. But it it can make it feel a bit clunky because you're like, oh, it's going to turn around. It's yeah. so slow and you can't see anything. Um, so I find myself like looking at the floor a lot instead of looking straight. Oh, really? Yeah, it's it's. I would a, a wider field of view would be probably yeah. a good thing because yeah, motion sickness is. You can turn off a uh, camera shake, which is good because when you're running, the camera will like oh, shake back and yeah. forth. Uh, don't want that. Um, but but yeah, first person. I I, I think I'm fine with it. I think in my ideal world, if I'm just being selfish, I don't care about what anyone else thinks or what people are thinking of the mm -hmm. franchise. I would want fixed camera or a third person again. I mm -hmm. think. Because playing Resident Evil 2 was third person, and, you know, yeah. that was great. It is interesting. Thinking back to uh, Medium and how it felt like it had a lot of Resident Evil 1 vibes with an yes. update. I think they really yeah. could nail a third person fixed camera Resident Evil today with yeah. the technology that exists. Yeah. Even if they did like a, a side story with it, just to see mm -hmm. what people think about it. Because, you know, you could do with Resident Evil 7, there are a bunch of DLC that were very different mm -hmm. to the main game. So you can kind of do something like that and just see how people feel about it. But I think they could do it in a really cool way. I think yeah, it'd be interesting. Agreed. That'd be cool. Well, I'm excited to play it. I'd probably it. be more, more, like, more inclined to play it if they did that. Because I, I still, yeah. I'm still not really one for these kind of games. But like I can, I can stomach <laughs> third person horror because i can i can sort of okay if it's fixed camera it would be slightly different but i can start like that because i can i can somewhat use it to sort of peek around <laughs> corners <laughs> just get away but like if it's first person and i'm walking down a corridor it was it was like we spoke the other the other week about returnal the one segment where you go in the house right i'm like i'm fine walking around in third person with giant aliens chasing me so i'm gonna mm. go in the house it's first, it's first person and I, I hear a footstep behind me i'm just like i don't want to turn around i don't want to mm -hmm. turn around so like yeah, yeah. it's the, the yeah. first person whoo no, thank Especially you. with the, the the field of view being so shrunk, because they yeah, do that in Returnal too. They like tiny. they shrink it down to, you know, make it more. It's probably a similar FOV. Mm -hmm. Now I think about it, it's probably a similar. I feel like it's the Destiny FOV that we lived with. I think for it's years. lower. Is actually. it lower? Yeah. I think. Let me see if there's um because I think I read somewhere that someone actually found out what it was. Resident Evil Village Eight FOV. Let's see if anyone actually knows. Because yeah. they it's it's been so bad that people have actually on PC they've made um a mod to pull the camera back. Interesting. Because huh. it's making a lot of people uh, Yeah. When you're not used to it, you you can definitely get sick, like motion sick from that stuff. Cause yes. it, yeah, it's like yeah. you're looking in a box as you're walking. Makes it definitely. makes it feel weird. Yeah. I can't see anything. I, I vaguely remember hearing that it was like below 70 or 70 and below is really tiny yeah fov is incredibly small um but but yeah the, the, if going into this resident evil i would say expect for there to be spooky segments um expect for there to be pretty gory stuff but um it's definitely a lot more action akin to going from resident evil one through three and then going into four nice it's very yeah. similar to four actually cool so you're 80 percent in so we won't know uh we'll probably talk uh, story spoilers next week then yeah the right. game is pretty short like if you're just playing through it um i've heard anywhere from seven hours at a low end to like 14 at a high end ish oh, wow. okay so you can finish it in like a couple streams and you'd be yeah you'd be done. yeah that's not very long I feel like <laughs> re7 was around 20 Right. Apparently, that's like a 10 hour game, is what a lot of people <laughs> played it. Well, the first, I... first time, you know, if you're not doing the puzzles, I think maybe I'm wrong, but I, I feel like it, you know, the first time when you're figuring stuff out, and you're taking your time, you're getting freaked out, you know, ends up being longer. Then when you know everything, you can just run through it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it depends how much of a scaredy cat you are, maybe. <laughs> If you're like going yeah. slowly through the halls and being like, "Ooh, what's that? Oh, I don't want to look." Then yeah. it adds at least a solid five hours to your game. Plan. Whenever I play games like this, like even in games like Returnal, I value my video game life like it's a real life. Same. <laughs> you know. Same. Like I cannot die. 
This is yeah. important. <laughs> If I die, I die. <laughs> I do the same thing. I'm like, and as a kid, when I was playing Resident Evil, I'm like, why am I scared? You know, if I die, I'm just start again. It's fine. It's yeah. not a big deal. But yeah. no, I can't get past it in my head. Yeah, there's something you could like, there's something that turns off my brain. And I'm like, suddenly the character and I'm like, well, terrified of getting caught by this monster. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to be able to talk spoilers because I think there's a lot I'd want to talk about uh, with Lady D. That we can't talk about until mm -hmm. you've at least played that segment. Right. Yeah. Okay. The castle. The castle is very cool, though. Um, I would actually be totally down for an entire Resident Evil just in that castle. Because I think their story is really interesting. Which, you know, we found this from the Maiden demo. Which I think the Maiden demo, by the way, was a phenomenal demo. Mm -hmm. Because you're not playing as Ethan. You're not experiencing the game as Ethan would experience it. You're experiencing it almost as, like, extra lore about the castle. Right. Um, and it's really, really interesting. Smart. Like, they they, you know, take virgins and turn them into wine. Like, that's Dang. interesting. How did that happen? <laughs> how did we? How did we just start doing that all of a sudden and actually <laughs> selling it to mass market? Wow. How? How is? They got an industry going on there. Hmm. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm looking forward to playing it. It's gonna be fun. Yes, I'm looking forward to you playing it and me yeah. watching you play. <laughs> I will I will be streaming at some point. It's just very crazy a lot of crazy things going on right now. Especially with Do you like, think we can speak spoilers next week? I that's my plan. Okay. I want to. Cool. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, at least at least speak about maybe the first half of the game spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. exactly, right? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Especially if it's not too long. It's not too long, yeah. no. Resident Evil games tend to be a bit on the shorter side. And, you know, it's probably a good thing when a game is scary. Like, I think people start to get a bit tired of being scared <laughs> for a super yeah, long time. Fear, fear, yeah. fear fatigue. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah if, you're, if you're in, like, a 30-hour game that's just incredibly scary the whole way, maybe you put it down at, like, hour 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, one. <laughs> yeah, hour, hour, hour one. Hour one. In Eric's minute, case. Minute two. Yep, exactly. Uh, well, that's cool. Looking forward to RE8. Looking forward to playing it. Uh, Biomutant. That's Biomutant. Coming soon, right? It's coming out on May 25th. And um, GameSpot did their final preview. So it's just like a kind of look at a couple things like uh, different areas and combat and loot and all of that. And then there were also mm -hmm. a bunch of videos of character customization um, customization is great. Oh my god. Okay, yes. The customization. Okay, so you can pick like their intelligence, their charisma and stuff. And if you make them more intelligent, their head gets bigger. If you make that, them yeah. more charismatic, they get this like smirky grin on their face. <laughs> if you make them strong, of course, they get like extra buff. And if you make them agile, they get skinnier, smaller, um, which is really cool. I like seeing uh, a representation of the skill points that you've kind of put into your character mm. just be on your character i dig mm -hmm. that I like that a lot i'm fully um, going 100 strength i want to make like a meathead <laughs> who's got zero intelligence <laughs> tiny like, head Boom. no neck Boom. just <laughs> shoulders <laughs> arms. just a triangle dorito body and he just walks into battle <laughs> like, burr, 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 burr. that's gonna be me tiny head <laughs> big body what yep. type of game is biomutant um, so it is an open world post apocalyptic adventure RPG. Is it multiplayer? Yeah. Online? Mm, I haven't player? heard anything about multiplayer. No. Cool. Yeah. It's basically kind of like like standard sort of like action adventure sort of thing. So, you know, I guess, yeah. you know, Ratchet and Clank or even mm -hmm. Ghost of Tsushima. I just I kind of, you know, got a world, explore it, go do your stuff. And, but yeah, it, it looks really cool. Like, even from the gameplay, just like, just, I think, because I think, um, what was it? I looked, I looked online like how long to beat the other day. Like I think it's like it ranges from anywhere from twenty to up to sort of sixty five hours something like that. So that, you know, mm -hmm. depending on how much you how much Crazy. you explore and stuff. But it's um yeah, I mean there's there's a lot of like cool different abilities and like the combat. The they they made some interesting comparisons to say DMC for combat because you got did, a yeah. mixture of like melee with range. So you sort of like jump away, use your guns, and then come back in and stuff. But there's um yeah, it seems like there's quite a lot of combat options. Cool. Yeah, there's also options for like aligning yourself with different clan type stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that um, what I've heard from people who have, you know, had previews of the game is you're probably going to want to do multiple playthroughs because depending on which group you align yourself with, it does change the way that the story unfolds. So you might want to check out, oh, well, if I align myself with these guys, where does the story end up going? Mm. Which is which is super interesting. Mm hmm. 
And there's different classes as well. So maybe you want to do a different playthrough to be a different class. Very cool. It's exciting. very cool. And visually, like, it just looks so good. All of the biomes yeah. look beautiful. And it's really, really well done. Of course, You're playing... So the actual character you are yourself is like a furry thing. Cat, cat dog, fox. Cat dog, fox. Cat dog, fox. No, rodent. Yeah. Rodent. Mouse. Rodent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're one, so, like, the fur looks really good as well. Um, so visually, mm. I think the game looks phenomenal. And there's different mounts that you can get. So you can ride, like, in a boat on the water. I saw them actually riding, I think it was a book, like a magic book. So you can fly through the sky on a magic book. Cool. Which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. And, and there's loot, of course, like, different rarities of loot mm -hmm. and all of that so there is a loot aspect to it as well and, and there's crafting as well there is this crafting, crafting too. nice it seems like a it's because this is a like a double a studio right because it's not mm -hmm. indie it's not triple a right so it's like right in the middle mm -hmm. um i'm always excited to see what these games can do mm -hmm. and this one looks like it's doing it's doing some good stuff and all of the gameplay that i've seen as well i think has been on xbox okay and yeah. it looks freaking awesome that's basically what put it on the radar for me. You shared that video, and I was like, this looks awesome. It like, does. I want to play this game. It really does. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm glad it's still, I'm, I'm glad it, you know, it ends up still coming to light as well, because I, because this has been, yes. you know, it was, it was revealed, what, 2017? Because yep. I saw, like, I think, I think it was in 2017, I, I, I had like a behind closed doors demonstration at Gamescom. So like, I got like a very early, like, you know, preview of it. And I was like, oh, the game looks cool. And then suddenly it just went off the radar. I was like, oh, it's never mm. going to happen. So, yeah, so I think I think I think what excites me the most is this kind of reminds me almost of like the game, the, the kind of style of games that I used to play, like before content mm -hmm. creation, before stuff like that. Like I just used to just love like action adventure games, things like that. So, you know, again, mm -hmm. like Ratchet and Clank, or even just back in the day, like Banjo kazooie or any, any of those kind of like, those just, just those kind of like explore the very bright, vibrant world. And you know, it's not very deep on story, but you just kind of got a cool character and just running around. Like I used to play those games all the time. Mm -hmm. Um and I feel like in like, you know, as in more more recent years, like you've seen fewer of those. It's much more like, oh yeah, beige color palette and grim and mm -hmm. aggressive mm -hmm. and stuff. It's Super like, serious. Just, yeah, it's just so so different. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's gonna be fun. Sounds I think fun. it's gonna be great. And even their attention mm -hmm. to detail with stuff like um, there's different biomes that have different effects on you. So there's you know like a an ice biome which will make you cold. There's like a toxic biome that will actually make your character puke. If you do not have the resistances to the toxic biome, your character sits there and throws up. Too much grog. So it's yeah, exactly. It's, it's all those attention <laughs> attention to detail of it really mm. matters what you put into your character of whether you can withstand these different biomes. Um, yeah, so I, I'm excited because it seems like it's getting more and more on people's radar because it was a game that I think was announced obviously a very long time ago, 2017. Mm -hmm. um, and people were excited when they saw it, but it was one of those games where people were like, this game's never coming out. Yeah. Because it, it happens a lot, especially in that double A kind of studio thing where right. you don't have the massive backing of billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does happen where people have this really cool idea and they make a little bit of it and it looks awesome and it just never happens. Right. So I think it's kind of flown under a lot of people's radar. But now it seems like people are starting to see more of it as, you know, IGN are putting stuff out about it and GameSpot and it's one of those games that you see it and you see the gameplay and you're like, yeah, 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 that looks great. <laughs> That's so, what happened with me. I was like, yeah, yeah. this looks fun. It looks, I awesome. play this. It looks super when fun. When am I playing this? <laughs> <laughs> May 25th. So, that definitely helps of uh, when it's just you show someone a little bit of gameplay and they're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Did, when was the the date announced when it's dropping? Was that pretty recent as well? I don't even. I feel like it was pretty recent. Yeah, I think it was because I, cause I think it was. I think it was like it was. It was quiet for a long time. And then suddenly they dropped a brand new trailer and they dropped the release date. Yeah. I think yeah. It was like, so this like is all kind of a surprise, kind of. right? It's like, oh, it's suddenly mm -hmm. happening in May. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. And yeah. this is it's yeah. made by uh, Experiment One Hundred and One is the studio okay. there in Sweden. Nice, ah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Very, 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 very excited. Uh, yeah. And it's coming out on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. So, what if play it's just about Game everyone. Pass? Ooh, I don't know. 
Mm. Yeah. That Game Pass. Delicious. <laughs> Everything. All the games. <laughs> oh, man. And the armor that you can get for the characters is just so ridiculous like and awesome. Some, <laughs> yeah. I like how some of the, the, the ridiculous weapons, there was like, I saw, I think I was watching like a GameSpot preview and they, they made a, like a crafting weapon for, I think it was like a safe door linked to a cane that was like tied together with like some gaffer tape or something. And it's basically <laughs> like a, like a wooden wow. cane with like a door on it and you just like <laughs> things with it. And I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. The, I, I hope it is as deep as it looks. Cause it really looks like the game is very deep in terms of each mm. character that someone's going to make is going to be totally different. It's going to look different. They're going to have a different class. They're going to have, of course, different armor, different weapons. They're going to be better in certain biomes. Mm. Um, so I, I hope it is as deep as it looks. Cause it, it, it looks pretty damn awesome. I just have to think strategically because I'm like, I always like these days, I like to make this sort of the beefy Jimbro character. But I know that if I do that in this kind of game, <laughs> it's going to come a point where there'll be a platforming thing where they're like, if you were super agile, you could climb up here. And I'll be like, no, <laughs> I wanted to do that. And then I'll be like, sorry. Curse these yeah. large muscles. Ugh. I know. What are they useful for? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, dear. Uh, muscles. <laughs> to hit hard. That's what they're useful for. True. To hit True. hard. <laughs> That works for me. Uh, cool. Looking forward to it. Mm. Uh, anything else yeah. happening this week? Uh, I don't know if there was really much. Um, kind of a slow news week, right? Bit of a slow mm. news week in the old gaming world. Yeah. Um, one cool thing about Resident Evil is that um, Village broke 100,000 concurrent players on PC, wow. which is a new series record. Hmm. So people, uh, people were very into this. That's Resident crazy. Evil. That usually doesn't happen unless it's like a multiplayer game. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so the second best was Resident Evil 2 Remake, which mm. was 74,000. So okay. that's, uh, you know, that's still a fair bit away from 100,000. 100,000 yeah. is a hell of a lot. Yeah, people are excited about it. And Resident Evil 7 got 20,000 concurrent was their max. Very cool. So wow. Very, hmm. very interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, there's always there's the users are there's more people signing up for um, for Steam. Obviously, there's more users today Definitely. than there was, yeah. you know, a few years ago. So there's that as well. Eventually, all these games, you know, they're gonna be breaking records all the time because of that. But yep. it is awesome. That's great. I mean, it goes to show you people are interested in the Resident Evil franchise. People, they really are. It's, you know, Resident Evil 7 kind of got a lot of new people interested, I feel like, and then mm -hmm. the marketing of Lady D and people wanting to know what that's yep. all about. Mm. Yeah, RE7 was a, you know, they kind of reinvented stuff. Or like, uh, you know, it's a re uh, reimagining of how uh, Resident Evil could operate. And I, I really enjoyed Re Resident Evil 7. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah, definitely looking forward to this too. one too. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I don't know if there was a whole lot of news. No, there's a, there's a few things. So what, what else we got this month? We've got a few things coming out this month. So we've got Metopia for anyone that wants to kind of take their, their little me adventure on Switch. Yeah. There it and, is. You know, That's the game right there. Is there is a demo for that. And then, <laughs> um, so you you got that one. And then, but then obviously we're, we're not too far away in the, in the grand scheme of things from, from June. And then in June, right. obviously we've got Ratchet and Clank. That's uh, the big one for June, right? Cool. Yeah. yeah. Ratchet and Clank is a big one. Also Mario Golf. Oh, yeah. golf. I forgot about this. <laughs> I'm excited golf about this. Kind of hey hilarious. Because honestly, like a lot of the time I look at those, I'm like, eh, you know what? But so, like the multiplayer angle and the fact that you can just like troll each other on the golf course, I know that's going to be hilarious. Golf looks awesome. Yeah. And you have Final Fantasy VII. The, the interlude. The, yeah, the interlude. So the upgrade mm. to next gen and it's getting the Yuffie DLC side story. True. Nice. Which I only realized the other day. I mean, I, it makes sense, obviously, because they're moving forward. But I didn't actually realize that the DLC is only for PlayStation 5. So if you have played it on PS4, then you're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have a PS5... Which a lot of people don't. Yeah, so uh, that's... that's. I didn't realize that. I knew that, obviously, like, obviously I, didn't I knew realize the PS5 that upgrade was only for the console. But like, I didn't realize that the actual DLC... Yeah, I mean... Um, I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah, so unless, unless I was mistaken, but I looked on the official website, I couldn't see any reference anywhere for PS4 for the DLC. So I was like, wow. I guess not then. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Yeah. 
I guess it's kind of like kind of goes sort of you know match where they're the direction they're going because obviously as they move into eventually part two, if ever we get that, uh, then <laughs> um, I guess that'll be PS5 only. So probably if they're trying to really push the way that the game looks and what it can do. I guess mm-hmm. it's something you have to do. Well, actually, there's a there's a lot in that in that time window. I'm just just I'm just seeing the dates now. There's like Final Fantasy is on the is on June 10th. Mm-hmm. June 11th is it's then Guilty Gear and Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> Holy crap! Which is crazy. And then oh, the one that I'm looking forward to. Do any of you guys remember Alex Kidd in Miracle World? Alex Kidd in Miracle World. Ah, oh, that was Ring the bell. School, it was an old school game on the Sega Master System. It used to come in, it pre-installed on the, on the system, so when you didn't have a oh box. yeah. Yeah. The first game I ever played when I was a kid, like two years old, I, would, I, I was obviously sold by it because obviously he shares the same name as me. So I was like, well, he's a cool character, but it's really cool. It's just a, it's an old school platformer. <laughs> but they are doing Alex Kid in Miracle World DX, like the remaster thing, and it looks so, so good. The graphics for it are incredible. Uh, so if anyone wants like a nice game to pick up on Switch, that'll be, uh, I mean, it's actually on everything. But if you want it on Switch, that also comes out on cool. June 24th. So there's actually quite a lot. And Scarlet Nexus next month as well, June 25th. Whew. That is a lot. So I'm on. very excited for Scarlet Nexus. Maybe we should mm. talk about Scarlet Nexus a bit. We haven't talked much about it, of true, what it, what it is and all that good stuff. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, I mean they dropped a new trailer the other day. Like obviously, uh, the, the the interesting thing with the new trailer they dropped was that that because all the promotional material up until now has just featured the male protagonist, but the new trailer showed off that there's actually two characters you can play as, and there's like the female protagonist now as well um so that was that was pretty cool but yeah for anyone that hasn't hasn't seen it or don't know what it is basically it's uh again one of the sort of hack and slash action combat style games you know think dmc vanquish Mm -hmm. uh astral chain that kind of stuff set in a sort of futuristic um neo tokyo style think ghost in the shell meets akira Mm -hmm. um and you've got this this force of monsters called like the otherworlders and these really weird creatures that they've created that are sort of amalgamations of like inanimate objects paired with plants so it might just be like i don't know a car with like legs sticking out of it and and (laughs) flowers and stuff they look really weird and obviously you then you then play as part of the police force or the defense force who then fight them back um but the kind of underlying premise is really cool because in combat you have a um you have like from the stuff that we've seen so far you can control things with your mind so you've got like psychokinesis so mid combat you're fighting but then you're also grabbing objects from the environment and like pulling them into combat and sort of seamlessly transitioning with that uh, and then you've got like teammates that you can partner up with and borrow their abilities and things it looks really cool like visually it does. It looks cool. very cool um sounds cool yeah and it's got an anime as well it's going to have an anime it is yeah and the anime is um who was the studio that is doing the anime for it was it UFO Table or am I going to use someone it else? Might, it might be. Let me I know Scarlet. UFO Table have confirmed to, to be doing the Tales of Arise. They have, Arise. yes. yes. But I don't know if they were also Scarlet Nexus. If they are, I, I'm, I'll be very excited. I, I feel like maybe it might be. Possibly. Not getting an anime. But oh, yeah. Oh, Did we ever oh, speak oh, about Tales of Arise as well? That was the other no, one. we should talk about that too. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, their anime. When I saw who was making their anime, I was like... That is very exciting. Uh, it looks like the studio is Sunrise, oh, okay. um, which they did like Code Geass, uh, Gintama. Oh. Um, so they're they're definitely not a small studio who hasn't done no, anything. No, no, they've no. done Inuyasha. They've done a bunch of like big, 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 mm. big stuff. True. Also, Love Life Sunshine. So you know, maybe we'll get some idol, idol dancing in Scarlet Nexus anime. Of course, naturally, mm. yes. I would. I mean, if we can get that Final Fantasy seven <laughs> when Cloud's wearing the dress and he's doing Amazing. the dance, and you have to input the buttons, yep. I want that in every game. Put all of my protagonists in a dress. Quick time and put them on dancing. Stage. Yeah. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. I would like that very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Scarlet yeah. Nexus visually looks very, uh, very, very, very good combat looks incredibly fun it's just one of those games again where you see gameplay of it and you're like i'm interested in playing you mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah it looks very cool yeah that's cool and the awesome. same goes for um tales of arise as well so yeah they dropped the new gameplay for that the other day so tales of have you have you played any of the any of the tales of games before i oh, have no. yes Okay, yeah, you got things like Tales of Symphonia, Tales of Vesperia. They're just like it's just like a really good like JRPG series. But mm. uh, so for anyone that hasn't played them, they have like a real time combat system instead, where you go into battle and then obviously you've got a squad of four people, but you control one character. And then when you're in the battles, 
you freely move around. So that's why it resonates better with nice. me because I'm not really a turn-based person. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always really liked them. And I, um, yeah, so Tales of Arise is the 17th entry in the series. Uh, and it's really, really cool. They're, they're kind of, I feel like the the push for Tales of Arise, the way that they're stancing it is kind of how Capcom stance once on the world. And they're like, we're really going to try and put a big focus on making this accessible in the West. So for the first mm, time, yeah. it's launching worldwide. You know, it's not going to be like mm. two years after Japan or anything. Um, there's a lot of, like, you know, ch- I say the core foundation still remains the same. Uh, it's like a wide linear game. So it's not a full open world game. Um, but it's, uh, you know, kind of got that anime aesthetic, but it's being built now in Unreal Engine instead. So it looks really, really nice. Mm, it does look um, very, very good. Yeah. And you've got some crazy, like, visual combat combat effects. Like, the environments look amazing. Like, when you have, like, team up attacks and stuff in battle, you get these crazy visual effects. Um, but yeah, they've, they've you know, they've, they've kept the, the core foundation of, like, the real time combat elements, but they've added some sort of, you know, nuance to it. There's, like, mm-hmm. a counter system now, and there's some other, like, weak point systems, which, you know, people will kind of be quite familiar with but i think they've definitely tried to sort of make it more um approachable and the nice thing is if you've never played a tales of game before you don't have to worry because they're all self-isolated stories much like final nice. fantasy so mm-hmm. you can just pick up tales of arise uh, and don't have to worry about anything cool yeah yeah i'm, I'm really excited for this one because like you said with with monster hunter world that kind of put it on the map for western mm. audiences to get really into it and it just took off absolutely yeah. insanity um so i'm excited that they're doing this with tales to kind of focus on growing it in the west and getting yeah. people into the franchise and having an anime by ufo table is definitely not bad because uh, you know they did demon slayer and everyone everyone loves demon slayer even if you're not an anime fan you probably know what demon slayer is you've seen the animation and you think it's cool so they're like oh you have an anime by, anime by by these guys that's exciting what's the game about oh this looks fun um, mm, so I'm I'm nice. hoping it does get a bit of a, a following now that they are focusing on launching it here. Mm. Very cool. 100%. Lots of good games this year. This year is nuts. Like, yeah. there is a lot of things that I'm interested in. And May is also, you know, pretty packed because we have the Monster Hunter update that's coming out. We're going to mm-hmm. have Biomutant. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, there's a lot of stuff kind of every month. Like, I don't know what's coming out in July. I don't know if there's mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. until I know August is a uh, Kenna Bridge of Spirits. Yes, very excited about that. Oh, yes. very excited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll get more visibility as well because in uh, June, they, you know, they have said there is going to be a digital E3 of sorts now. You right. know, yeah, not a company. So, so at least come like you know, companies are probably going to come together and start giving us some dates and stuff. Uh, oh, July is also uh, Legends of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Which oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was yeah. July. Yeah, so that's, that's about the only thing on the current, like, actually known radar. And then we start to get into kind of a, you know, broad horizon. We, yeah, I, I, I generally can't wait for Yeah, you know. are we expecting to see, like, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 type of stuff? I really Possibly hope God so. War I mean, like, the thing is, it's, yeah, it's, it's weird. Because, I mean, you know, like, there was obviously that slate they dropped at the very beginning of the year when they were like, here's all these games coming out this year. And, you know, like, Horizon was on there. God of War was on there. There were some, like, rumors from, like, Jason Schreier saying that, like, both those games are no longer going to be 20... 20 mm. but um sony haven't said anything so you know until they do then i i do genuinely feel like as much as i would love to see it i genuinely feel like god of war this year is probably not gonna happen just yeah. because like short of them saying hey here's a like if ever someone announces a game and all they show me is a logo i'm just mm-hmm. like we're not seeing Years. that or any t- yep. any <laughs> yeah not even like um, a full trailer just a logo <laughs> i'm like exactly. you know, when they did happening. that with when they did that with metroid prime 4 i was so like heartbroken i was like oh oh that's gonna yeah, be forever yeah, that, if ever <laughs> that is bro- yeah definitely I, mean, I guess even horizon because although horizon we've had like a trailer it's still all just been like cg stuff so even that True. you have no idea really to sort of see i mean they've they dropped a few things which they said like gameplay screenshots and stuff but you never really mm-hmm. sort of know but, um so yeah. here's a little something um uh let's see november 2020 sales for ps4s out in mm-hmm. circulation around 114 million units, okay? So a lot mm. of units. And then you look at PS5, uh, there's 7.5 million PS5s that have been sold, uh, I think as of March 31st? Yeah. Mm. Wow. So huge discrepancy in terms of numbers because yeah. there's obviously a huge demand and people are trying to get them. I mean, eight, 8 million is still a lot, obviously, but it's nowhere near, like, say, 50... No. 60, 70 million install base to really be able to sell these next-gen titles at a high level. 
Yeah, that's I, that's mm. something that I saw a lot when playing through Returnal is, you know, so many people are like, I would love to play this game. It looks yeah. great. I can't play this game. Don't have a PS5, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. keep forgetting. I, I, I generally keep forgetting that. Like, yeah, same same thing with me and Returnal. I was like, yo, if you're, if you're sleeping on this game, check it out. People are like, I'm not sleeping. I just can't <laughs> play it. I'm, like, I'm, I'm not, not sleeping, sleeping, bro. Can't play it. <laughs> <laughs> they won't yeah. let me in the door. <laughs> oh, dude. But that's just raising a good point. Though. I mean, yeah, if, if the numbers like that are so small, and, you know, especially given that PlayStation IPs, like first party IPs have historically always just done like gangbuster numbers. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it would make sense to a degree as well to be like, well, why are we going to rush Horizon and God of War out the gate when True. really... At most right now, and if assuming every single person that owns a PS5 wants to buy it, <laughs> yeah. at best we can get seven million sales, which for yeah. them is like a do that nothing compared to their previous like this can sell fifty million or hundred million, right? So, um, so maybe it is one of those sort of sensible things where they're just like, oh yeah, let's just like pull back a little bit and then give us more development time. Hopefully, we can then sort out the yeah. manufacturing stuff. Give it another year, people. We get another it's like tricky. ten million PS5s out there. It, it's tricky because like you want to give people titles to consume like we want mm -hmm. more titles to play on new hardware but there is it does seem like there's less incentive for them to get them out as fast as possible because yeah. definitely of there's just not as many uh installs yet potential mm. installations for the ps5 yeah i think best case scenario for for those games because it really feels like they're not coming out maybe they'll surprise us but Maybe the the E3 kind of comes around and we get a trailer of both of them with an actual date of mm -hmm. giving us, you know, maybe next year, a specific date, not just like March, not first quarter. Yeah. Like a, mm. a date. <laughs> a date. Yep. Something like that. Until I get an actual date, I'm like, so this could be five years from now. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if you're telling me 2021, it doesn't fill me with confidence. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I mean that that has to be affecting some choices out there for developers, even like potentially new titles or, or why titles have still supported past gen or yeah, previous gen and current gen because like the install base is just so much larger. <laughs> you know? Yeah. In comparison. So true. Yeah. Yep, definitely. We'll see. It's it's a shame because PS5 games are really phenomenal with the controller. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see more people make good use of it. Speaking of which, Resident Evil 8 does make use of it. Oh, nice. Yeah, like, we haven't seen many. Yeah, it's uh, so when he's like low on health, it gets harder to kind of aim and pull the trigger and different weapons have different feel feels in the trigger, hmm. especially. Um, so it's not something like Returnal. I think Returnal was pretty nuts with using the controller with, you know, feeling raindrops and feeling yeah, snow and like yeah a lot no, of feedback no but it's definitely up. there yeah it is it is definitely there which not many uh un unless it's a ps5 exclusive it doesn't seem to get used very much which kind of makes sense because it's like this is just one of the platforms we're launching yeah. on why are we going to spend this whole bunch of time putting yeah. effort into the controller true true do they have but it does use it. this is a briar question but i wonder <laughs> if there's a, a racing game that utilizes the ps5's haptic triggers like that that would you know, be good. Right? Because, like, historically, you just press down the trigger. You don't get any feedback feedback mm. of the pedal. But now with the haptic trigger, you could totally have pedal feedback. With you the totally trigger. could. Yeah. You I could know even you have, like, like, when to switch gears and stuff, mm. feeling it in the controller and yeah. even feeling, like, different terrains that you're driving yeah, on. Yeah, you drive on, like, the gravel and stuff. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be cool. That would actually make me want to play That would actually be game. amazing. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the controller, just knowing what people can do with that controller makes me want to check that out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like, Returnal, I actually really enjoyed. Once I got used to it, I enjoyed the half press for regular shoot mm -hmm. and then full press yeah. for um, alternate fire. I thought it was actually Same. really brilliant once you got used to it. Yeah, because it's because it's, the thing is, if it, was, if it wasn't such an abrupt hold, it wouldn't work. Because if you just mm -hmm. had to, like, learn where to hover your finger, but because it just does have a genuine resistance, it's yeah. just like, oh, it just feels, you know, unless you literally go, and just, like, <laughs> grab on it. It's yeah, uh, yeah I, th I thought it was great. It, you, mm -hmm. And it's, as you say, like, it's you do very quickly adjust to it. Like you know, you do mm -hmm. it the first couple of times. It happens. You like you overshoot. And you're like, oh, okay, my mistake. And then very quickly, your mind adapts. And you're like, oh, and then you're just half pressing all the time. Yeah. So yeah, yeah they do the I thing where it feels like it can settle half pressed. So you kind of mm -hmm. have like the comfort of being able to do half press. Yeah. 
it feels yeah. like a natural stop as it so for anyone who mm. doesn't have a ps5 and hasn't used it the way that they use the trigger was you know how you pull it all the way down and it's a genuine stop line is the end of the trigger mm -hmm. it feels like that so unless you're yeah. really pushing it down you're not going to um over over push yeah. too much and you get used to it very 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 yeah. quickly which is what makes me excited for a potential racing game to include that stuff to feel yeah. like an actual pedal as opposed, opposed to just pushing a button for gas. <laughs> yeah, that would it would work amazingly in a race. Like, wouldn't game. it be awesome to have that much control over how much gas you're giving it? So you have like this gradation of how much actual fuel is True. hitting the engine. Yeah, the trigger response. Yeah, True. it would be awesome. True. Yeah. And it, hey, it opens up extra buttons for developers. You don't need to find a place to put your buttons because I feel like games are getting more and more buttons to do more and yeah. more different things. So having a controller where you can essentially have two extra buttons by using the triggers, yeah, um, well, that'd be a good thing. Yep, mm. absolutely. Well, is that mm -hmm. the episode for today? I, I believe so, because Tefty's got to go get stabby stabbed. I got to go oh, get my 5G upgraded. <laughs> Your 5G upgrade, 5G plus. Yeah, my my finalized 5G enhancement installation. <laughs> Let's hope you don't get mega sick. Yeah, fingers crossed, because there's a lot going on. Like tomorrow's the the, the day Destiny. before Destiny. <laughs> yeah, the, the Destiny uh, season launches tomorrow, and I don't want to yeah. feel like I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> that would suck. That's why I'm getting mine on Friday. I pre-planned. I would take call. the weekend to be very sick and hopefully be done by Sunday. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Well, that is episode number, I already forgot, 93? 93. 93. 93. Side quest complete. <laughs> thank you very much for hanging out, listening, watching, all that stuff. Uh, if you are a Patreon member, thank you very much for the support. Same with our Twitch subs. We do appreciate all the support across the board. And thanks for thanks for hanging out. It's awesome. Thanks um, for being here, guys. Yeah. Eric, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me over on Twitter at Eric or YouTube at Eric's Gaming, uh, where this week I will probably be playing more Monster Hunter again. Really? <laughs> Can't wait yeah. to hear about the yeah. May update. Yeah. Yeah, I hope we get a trailer soon. That'd be cool. They're, they're going to tell us the day before. So I'm just, you know, waiting. For yeah. <laughs> and where can people find you, Watts? Uh, I am Miss 5000 Watts. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Just look for Miss 5000 Watts. Cool. And I'm Tefty Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. And I do plan on streaming RE8 at some point. Just, you know. Tonight. Maybe. Before I'm... the sick hits you. Before, <laughs> Before the sick. <laughs> Before the sick takes over. Yeah, maybe. That might, might be a possibility. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you real soon for another episode. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you later.